Great grind day, great grind day. Listen, what's today? It's Saturday morning? It's early in the morning. Well, maybe not early. I feel like I've been up since four o'clock. But I'm out here at Flipology 101 with my man Ramon Tooks. He called me up. He said, Kinder, I need you to come and talk at Flipology 101. I said, Ramon, I got you, brother. You're my man, 100 grand. So we out here this morning, gonna be out here for, for about an hour or so. Just share, inspire, you know, get everybody ready for the conference and get them on their day. After that, we on to a full day of speaking and coaching. So look, y'all stay tuned for something great. Y'all have a great grind day, we talk soon. I started making making bad choices, making bad decisions. And at 21, like, and it took me years to recover. I always knew how to make money. But I ain't never know what to do with it when I got it. And most of us in here, you know how to make bread. You know how to make money. You got a great idea. You know how to do it. But when you get it, you don't know how to grow it. You come in here, you soaking up all this information. And you're going to walk out of here the same way you came in. And you ain't going to do nothing with it. 85% of y'all. And then people wonder, yo, why, how come they millionaires and how come they billionaires? It's because they not only want what it looks like, they want what it feels like. They're in practical application. You just like to get hyped up. You just like to feel, and that's why I like, like when I come now, I don't do the motivational. I come to challenge you because if I wanted to see that light bulb go off. And here's the thing, it don't matter how old you are. It's about the character of it. And I jacked my character up. See, what it is is you chasing money and you ain't doing business. So I don't want you to come in here and not be ready to make take a chance. You better stop playing double dutch. Because when you write on your paper that you say you want something and somebody counting on you to get it, you got to be willing to make that move. And that's what separates the great ones that you say are great, the successful people. And I ain't just talking about money. I'm talking about people that are at the top of their game. Because I work with cats that got money and they miserable. But they ain't got that double dutch in them. Whatever they say they want, they ain't like, they like, rah! And some of y'all ain't got that dog in you. You ain't got that fire in your belly. You say you want it, but you really want what it looks like. You ain't willing to go through what this feels like. And you think you can just come here and write down some great gems or some great quotes and open up the book. I'm telling you, you're gonna have to go in there and grab it by the throat. I thought his presentation was so inspirational. It was as if a fire was being lit right inside me. I think it was exactly what I needed to start off this day to figure out how to get myself moving in real estate. My biggest takeaway was being able to identify clearly what my motivation is and have that be the fire that drives me. How much percentage of effort are you putting in? And it's not bad. You just got to assess where you are. Sometimes you got to do an internal audit. And you could be out here running around doing this and doing that, and you hustling backwards because you think you're sweet. And you ain't sweet because you're measuring yourself against yourself. And how can you do that? You trying to get maximum results with minimum effort. The problem is not that you don't know what to do. The problem is you ain't doing it because you love comfort. You love for somebody to come up here and just talk to you so you can just boom, boom, boom. But when it's time to pick up the pen and work, you slouch back talking about I want success. I'm gonna hit seven figures because I put in the work. I'm happily married because I put in the work. So I don't chase men, women, drink or smoke. You catch that at the red light. So people be like, coach, how you come and you talk so strong? Because I live this life. I know what my numbers are. Cats in the league playing and they know every single Tuesday that a, a replacement is coming. They ain't got time to not put in the work. The effort can never slip down. They feed you good, Every, the protein, everything. They're in the gym working out, they, they training. There are no breaks. And then you wonder why people are successful. I told them I wanted to be a successful businessman. I told them I wanted to have a happy marriage. I told them I wanted to be a great father, but I wasn't putting in the work to do it. But when I finally figured this thing out, I said, you know what? I want what it looks like, and I gotta be willing to do what it, go through what it feels like, and so I sacrifice. As busy as I am, I block time off with my wife. As busy as I am, I spend time with my son. As busy as I am, I make sure to spend that quality time in my business. But as busy as I am, the most important area is my health. I'm down eight pounds. I feel good. Kendall was awesome. 
His presentation was great. Um, my biggest takeaway was part of what he said. What are we willing to give up to get to the next level? Because oftentimes we say that we want success, but we're not willing to do the things that would cause us to propel ourselves to the next level. So what are you willing to give up? I was at the crib one day in the bathroom, and we men, you know what I'm saying? Like, we feel like we can run on ice and not fall. And I fell out in the bathroom, and it was one of those I can't get up moments. And I had a lump up under my chin. And my wife was like, get up, I'm taking you to the hospital. And I was like, no. And she called my uncle, and he made me go to the hospital. They went, admitted me, saw the lump. I thought I had cancer. I didn't say I wanted to kill myself, but I didn't care, because I lost sight of who was counting on me. I lost sight of what I said I really wanted, because it got hard. So I ended up going to the doctor, and as soon as he did the little preliminary, he said, well, it looks like you got lymphoma. He says, cancer. Immediately in my head, I was like, I'm good. I ain't doing no chemo, no nothing. And I went and he said, we got to do a biopsy on that lump. I ain't never been cut open. From the time I did the surgery, all the way up until I was waiting to get the results, I'm, I'm not getting nothing but from my family but love. I thought it was a wrap. I was in my mind preparing to just, I'm good. Went to go to the doctor to get the results. And he had me and my wife waiting in there for an hour. And just out of nowhere, she just started breaking down crying. And I was like, babe, it's gonna be, I'm good, you know, it's gonna be all right. She said, you can't go. She said, I'm, I'm counting on you. She said, the kids counting on you. She said, your mother counting on you. She said, there's too many people counting on you. You got too much inside of you. It ain't time for you to go. And it was at that moment when in my head I made a decision. You know how you have that moment, you'd be like, Lord, if you, I didn't do that. But I made a decision that said, I'm done. Some of the things touch home as far as just some of the sacrifices he made and then the call to action that he gave us during the uh, presentation. It realigned me with what was important and it also called me to action. So leaving his motivational speech, well not motivational, but leaving his presentation, I'm gonna take action. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna focus on those things that are important to me and a absolutely execute on those things. But because I said that day and my wife told me, we counting on you, it put everything into perspective. It put my what do I want into perspective and it put my what am I willing to give up into perspective. Everything I do is for who's counting on me. And I asked you to write down what you wanted and what you were willing to get rid of. And you wrote it down. And then when I asked you who was counting on you, you wrote it down. But until you on death's doorstep, it don't hit. Mine hit. And that's why I slept in the airports. That's why when I came in here, I told you I ain't got time to play with you. Because people counting on me. And I want you to walk out of here and not be like the cub that was playing double dutch. I want you to go for the throw. And if what you do, if you're not driven by something bigger than yourself, something intrinsic, you'll never get what you say you want because you'll always let yourself down. And that's why I'm here standing in front of you, able to sit and stand with some great men and women because I made a decision. I am not that sweet. There's plenty of people that can articulate and speak better than me, but don't nobody grind like I grind. And I ain't talking about just work. I spend time with my family. Who's counting on you? That's my time.